this video introduces you to the concept of displacement in physics. In our last video, I deconstructed physics as the study of energy and ended up saying that maybe we should start our study by looking at time. Now, we did not get very far in our examination of what time is. And so we need to move up the ladder just a little bit and take a look at the concept of displacement. And that's what this video is about. In simplest terms, displacement can be defined as the moving of something from its place or position. So here's a fellow with a ball it leaves his hand and hits the wall. The ball has been displaced. Here is a stack of rocks and they do not appear to be moving. Now, of course, this is a static picture, but the point is, is that we could say these rocks are motionless. They are not being displaced. Perhaps more correctly, we should say that the rocks are not changing their position with respect to each other. They are staying in the same location. Now, there are many ways to describe an object's location. Here are several. Each of these descriptions could work in a given context. And of course, there are many other ways to describe location as well. What we need to do is figure out a way to describe location in such a way that we can quantify displacements, movements, and other variables that are associated with motion. So we need to look at how to use numbers and maybe graphs to describe location or position. By using numbers and graphs, we can describe positions with precision and consistency, and we can agree with each other about what we are measuring and what our measurements mean. Consider this simple number line. I can draw a stick figure above the line, and I think you would agree with me that the figure is at the position labeled three. We will know if the stick figure moves if it changes its position on the number line. Just a little terminology. We designate the zero point as the origin on our number line. And in the United States, we typically agree that positive numbers are written on the right of the origin, whereas negative numbers are on the left of the origin. You may never have given that much consideration but the direction is completely arbitrary. We have to agree on it. So positive on the right, negative on the left of the zero or the origin point. Now watch the figure on the number line. It's starting out at position three, but now it appears to be moving across the screen and it ends up at position eight. We can define the figure's displacement as plus five units along this number line. It ended up at eight, it started out at three. Eight minus three is five units with respect to the original position difference. That is its displacement. That might seem rather trivial, but watch again. Now the stick figure appears to be going backwards. Goes to the minus two mark. 
and it's headed back toward the right, toward the positive numbers, and ends up at the 8 mark again. Now what is the figure's displacement? Well, its displacement is plus 5 units with respect to his original position. But how can it be plus 5 in both cases? The figure obvious, obviously moved a lot more in the second case where he went backwards to the minus 2 and then forward to the 8. That's a total of 15 units of movement. And yet its displacement is defined only as where did it start, where did it end. What is the difference between those two points? So the figure moved backwards and forward a certain distance, but its displacement is measured in a slightly different way. It's a fine distinction, but we will use the term distance to mean how far something actually travels. This includes any twists, turns, forward, backward, up, down motions. Displacement is a special term that means the straight line difference between starting and final positions, regardless of how it traveled to get there. The term displacement has at least one other feature that distinguishes it from distance. Displacement includes a direction relative to the origin, or at least the starting point. So in, in the uh, picture, you can see that one figure is five units over toward the red negative numbers. The other figure is five units toward the end of the blue positive numbers. Both of them have a displacement of 5, but displacement means also a direction. So you have to say minus 5 or plus 5 with regards to the original position of the figure. So in our original two illustrations, the stick figure is plus 5 units further from the origin towards the right or towards the positive. Or if we looked at the screen as having north, south, east, west, it would be toward the east or toward the blue side. How you designate it isn't necessarily important as long as you are clear. You have to have both a number and a direction in order to give a proper displacement. So let me just reiterate that point. To properly state a displacement, you must specify the direction of final or current position with respect to the previous position. It can be up, down, left, right, positive, negative, one of the cardinal compass directions or even a given angle on a compass. Some way has to be designated. In this class, we will most often use positive and negative. And for example, if we throw something up and then it comes back down, we are going to have to agree is going up positive or is going up negative. We'll get to that in a later lesson, but there must be agreement so that we all understand what our displacement is. So the term displacement has a very particular meaning. And in the next few weeks, as we examine the motion of objects, quite often I will be referring to displacement, but sometimes I will slip up and I will say distance. It's a very picky point, and we're not gonna worry about it too much, but I want you to be aware of this fine distinction. Displacement is a straight line from the start to finish that includes a direction. Distance, on the other hand, can include all sorts of motions, and you don't necessarily have to specify a direction. Just to get you used to the concept of displacement, 
I want you to actually do a simple activity. I will give more instructions in the Google Classroom on exactly what to do. But basically, I want you to go outside when it's safe to do so. I don't want you to go out in the dark or um, you know, when it's raining or something. Take something like a sheet of paper and ball it up and throw it. And then I want you to measure the displacement of the ball of paper. Now, how are you going to measure that displacement? If you had a measuring tape, that's great. But what if you don't? I don't want you to go out and buy a measuring tape. Instead, the point of this exercise is to try to figure out a non-standard unit of measurement that you can use when we do our flying object uh, exercises in the next couple of weeks. You're going to have to throw an object and measure how far it goes, then let's figure that out now. So if you have a sidewalk and you're throwing on the sidewalk, you can count the number of blocks along the sidewalk. You can just pace it off, especially if you're in band class. You know how to uh, make a pace that's very, very even. You can just put one shoe in front of the other. Just put your steps very, very close to each other and count the number of steps. Whatever makes sense to you, find a way to measure the displacement of the object that you throw. And like I said, I'm just suggesting a sheet of paper. You don't have to throw it very far. The point is to come up with a measurement system and to get used to this concept of displacement. And so just to give you a preview of where we are going next, after you measure the uh, ball of papers displacement a few times. The next lesson will be about velocity. How do you measure velocity and what does it mean? Velocity and speed are very similar terms. Are they the same thing? That's what we will look at in our next lesson.